Hello friends, I hope that you're well. So as you know, on this channel, I talk a lot about backpacking tips and advice, and no matter what, the same frequently asked questions always seem to keep reoccurring. So today I am making an entire video addressing all of your most frequently asked backpacker questions. So the first question is, how big should my backpack be? Now I've done both ends of the spectrum. I've traveled with an 85 liter backpack and a 40 liter backpack. So 45 to 50 liters, tends to be the cutoff point for having hand luggage only. So if you know that you definitely only want to travel hand luggage only, you kind of really want to make it smaller than 50 liters. I feel like the majority of backpacks, if I'm going at like a bog standard average, the average is about 65 liters. And I think that this is a really nice size to start with. Obviously that does mean that you're going to have to get checked in luggage if you're going on a plane. But that's very, very normal. Not a lot of backpackers get very many issues from that. 65 liters is a nice compromise because it's not too big but you can still fit loads in. Because I used to travel with such a big backpack, but now I travel with a 40 liter backpack and it's completely fine. And I never thought that that was ever gonna be possible. I've kind of come to the realization that like, you will just fill the space that you have. If you buy an 80 liter backpack, you will fill that space and you will think that you need all of that space. If you buy a 40 liter backpack, you will make compromises to fill that space that you have and you will probably be okay as well. So just keep that in mind. The size of your backpack isn't really a big deal, but it is good to remember that you probably don't need half as much stuff as you think you need. So the second question is how much money do I need or like how do I budget? How do I work out how much a particular trip is going to cost? There's very many factors when it comes to working out your specific budget for your trip. You've got to think of like your daily spend in the country, like accommodation, food, travel, activities. You have to think of things beforehand, like your flights, travel insurance, visas, uh, vaccinations and medical. And you have to think about the type of backpacker that you are. If you are super, super frugal, you like to do things in the absolute cheapest way possible, or you just wanna have an epic trip, but you just don't have that much money to spend, then you're obviously gonna travel a lot differently from people who are perhaps going on a shorter trip, or they just have a lot more money to spend. Like that's gonna be two very different types of travel, and you're gonna have two very different types of Budget. I've actually put together a budget calculator which is available to purchase on backpackingbananas.com. I'll put it in the description, which basically does all of the work for you. You just input all of the values, it helps guide you along the way, and will give you hopefully a fairly accurate prediction of how much your specific trip is going to cost. Number three, how long should I go for? My personal answer to this is as long as you can and as long as you can afford to, because I feel like when I'm in destinations, I often feel like I'm rushing and I'm like, oh, I just wish I had like the time to relax in this destination as opposed to being like, go, go, go. I'd say the shortest amount of time that I personally would want to go on like a solo backpacking trip is two weeks because I feel like it always takes at least a couple of days for you to like settle down into backpacking life. But you know, some backpackers are on the road for over a year and are thriving and loving it. I guess it just depends on your job situation. If you're able to work on the road, if you're able to take a sabbatical, how much annual leave do you have? I think if I was in a job where I only had like a certain amount of annual leave, I I think personally I would want to take that all at once and do as big a trip as possible. But that's just a personal preference. You may be someone who chooses to like split up your annual leave in chunks and go on different trips throughout the year. Number four, shall I book a one way or a return flight ticket? If I was on a very specific time frame and I was doing a very specific trip, I would book a return. Just because the dates are a little bit more set in stone, you're not quite as flexible. If you do have a bit more flexibility in terms of dates you can travel and you also want to be a bit more flexible in where you travel and you kind of are one of these people who is like, I just want to go where the wind takes me which really is like backpacking is the time to do that in your life I personally would say always book a one-way flight this is what I do every single time when you do a flexible search on Skyscanner you can find some really really cheap flights and so I really don't think it works out to be that much more expensive if any more expensive at all than booking a return flight and as for the question that I know will follow that well what happens if I need a proof of return so often when you arrive in country they will ask for well where's your on Onward going flight or where's your onward going travel so we know that you're not going to overstay your visa in this country. There's a couple of options that you can do here. My favorite is to book a flight on Expedia.com. This was a tip that I got from Ellie the Wandering Quinn. I'll link her blog post in the description. But basically if you go specifically on Expedia.com and you book one of their flights, there's a 24 hour cancellation policy, which means that just before I get to the airport of the country that I am going to, I 
will go on Expedia.com. I would book a provisional onward flight and I pay for it on my credit card. And then once I'm in that country and I've been able to show my proof of that country that I'm going to, I will just then cancel that flight. This is something that I've done two or three times now and every single time it's been a success. And the money has been put back into my account within like 48 hours, I think. So it was pretty quick, but they do say, oh, allow like 30 days for this to happen. So the reason I like doing it on my credit card is because I don't actually feel the effects of the money going out of my account and coming back in. Another option you could do is book a fake onward flight. Um, these are actually completely legal and there's websites where you normally pay about 10 pounds. That's a non-refundable 10 pounds. And they basically just generate you a fake flight ticket that you can show to the officials who are asking for your onward flight. So that's a nice option if you don't want to pay that initial couple hundred pounds for a flight on Expedia. I will link in the description a website for that service. I think it's called aironwardticket.com. I need to check, but it's gonna be linked in the description. Question number five is, when do you book hostels and how do you choose? So I always find my hostels on both hostelworld.com and booking.com. I like to cross-reference the price of hostels on each of those websites. And often, sometimes there'll be some hostels that only appear or one or the other. So I do think it's a good idea to look at both. I I obviously look at the price of the hostel and all of the amenities it has, the location of the hostel I find to be very, very important. Like, do I want it to be one that's close to the airport or close to other transport links? Do I want it to be right in the center of town? But most importantly, even more important than that, I read the reviews of other backpackers who have stayed in that hostel and I see what they have to say. If I know I want a good night's sleep and someone is saying, this is a party hostel, I did not sleep at all. I'll go, oh, okay, maybe that's not the best one for me to book. Or if I know I'm gonna be by myself, I know I want to socialize in this destination, then I probably will pick one that's like a party hostel and I'll look for reviews that say that it has a great atmosphere and that it was easy to meet people because that's exactly what I'm looking for. As for when you book the hostel, I recommend if you know the specific date that you're going to be in that specific destination, I would just book it as soon as possible because then you know it's definitely not going to sell out. But in most circumstances on your trip, you're not going to know before you go the exact dates you're going to be in each exact destination. So what I like to do and I would say this is what the majority of backpackers do as well. You might have in mind beforehand a couple of nice hostels in that area but you will only book them a day or two in advance. I find that when you're backpacking you do tend to know where you're heading the next day or where you're going to be heading in two days time. Wi-Fi is so easily accessible these days everywhere in the world and the fact that you can book on your phone is so convenient. I do recommend if you have the opportunity to purchase a local sim when you're in the country that you're in so that even if the Wi-Fi in the hostel that you're in doesn't work. You can use just regular internet data wherever that you are so that you're always able to book your next hostel. There are some backpackers who will not book anything in advance. They literally just rock up at their new destination and find a hostel there and then. I've done that in the past and it has been successful, but personally, I just don't really enjoy doing that because one, there's no guarantee that you're gonna find anywhere good. You're not able to read the reviews online before you go. You don't for sure know that you're gonna have a space at the hostel that you want to go to and you may find yourself walking around with your backpack for a very long time hopping from hostel to hostel so I think especially if you are a beginner backpacker I wouldn't recommend doing that I'd recommend booking your hostel a day or two in advance question number six is it safe I'm scared again it really depends on where you're going most countries that you think are not safe enough to travel to probably are safe to travel but like everything in life there's always going to be an element of risk it is down to you to look after yourself look after your safety I have made a bunch of videos of how you can do this how you can look after your own safety and I will link those in the description but what you do need to understand is nowhere in the world, not even the safest countries in the world can guarantee your safety. There are literally rotten eggs everywhere in the world. So there's always going to be an element of risk when you just go outside, but you are much less likely to have something bad happen to you if you follow basic backpacker safety, which at the end of the day should just be common sense for you. If it's not common sense currently, make these things common sense. There are some countries or parts of countries which genuinely are too dangerous to go to though. And you should be able to find this information out on your local government website. So for me in the UK, I'll go on gov.co.uk and I think it's forward slash foreign travel advice. I'll link it in the description. And basically you can click on the country that you are planning on going to and it will tell you if there are specific areas which you should not go to, which are not safe. So that's how you know if you definitely should avoid an area. Number seven is 
Where do you leave your valuables on the beach? This is a very good question, especially if you're solo traveler, it can be a real predicament. I've come to the beach, I've got valuables, I wanna go in the water, what do I do with my valuables? So as a solo traveler, I try to plan ahead for this. If I know that I'm gonna be going to the beach by myself, if it's close by to my hostel, I just won't bring any valuables. I'll probably bring my GoPro, which is attached to the wrist and it comes with me in the water, but I probably won't bring my phone. I probably won't bring my purse. If I do need money to enter the beach or something, maybe I'll just bring that cash. Obviously this is not always the case though. Sometimes you're not close to your hostel and you do have your valuables on you. It's not the easiest of situations. And I'll be honest in the past, I've just done things like hid my phone and my purse under a pile of clothes that doesn't look like there's valuables there. And then when I'm in the water, I would just be swimming and then every once in a while, I'd just look back and make sure my things are okay. I don't necessarily recommend this option though. This is not the safest option. I think a nice compromise is you can get these waterproof pouches, which are just kind of the size that's like bigger than your phone. They're normally clear and they normally come with a rope that you can tie around you. And so you stick your phone and your money in there and then you can literally swim with your phone and your money but they're not gonna get wet. Obviously it does restrict you a little bit, however, and that's why this question is a really hard one to answer. I guess other things you can do is try and find someone to go to the beach with, and then you can alternate looking after the valuables. Or you could try identifying someone on the beach who's close by, who you think looks trustworthy, and ask them to watch your stuff. Obviously this doesn't guarantee full security of your things though, so obviously I can't say, oh yes, that's the right answer to this question. But it is something that you can consider. But generally I think the best option and the only secure option is to just not bring your valuables to the beach, if you can. And finally, question number eight, am I too old to travel? or too young? A question that I receive all the time, surprisingly from people of all ages, and my answer is no. I don't think that you are ever too old to go backpacking. If you want to know the average age of a backpacker, I think that depends on the destination. I think in Australia and perhaps like the most common parts of Southeast Asia, like Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, the average age is probably like young 20s, young to mid 20s. But then I found that in South America and in Central America, I'd say the average age was probably like late 20s. Obviously Obviously you do come across some much younger backpackers like down to the age of 18 and then sometimes you come across some backpackers who are perhaps into their 40s and I genuinely genuinely think it does not matter as long as you no matter what age you are are willing to hang out with other people no matter what age they are because you're all there for the same reason you're all wanting to do the same thing it does not matter I like to think I'm still gonna be backpacking when I'm in my 40s but I feel like I'll probably make compromises like staying in a private room of a hostel just because I feel like I want a little bit more luxury at that time in my life and as for asking if you're too young for backpacking I think the minimum age is 18 just because I feel like a lot of hostels do have rules saying like you must be 18 plus so I wouldn't recommend going if you're younger than 18 but I don't believe that 18 is too young to go backpacking I think that it's all about confidence if you feel confident to look after yourself and you're ready to tackle the challenge then absolutely go backpacking at whatever age you feel ready to do that and try to remember that even if you're not fully confident yet backpacking is about going outside of your comfort zone and challenging yourself and it's just down to you to take that leap of face and say yes I'm ready to try and smash this and try and be the confident person that I've always wanted to be. I really hope that this video has helped you out and hopefully clear up a few of those most frequently asked questions. Good luck if you are heading out on your first backpacking trip. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel which tackle so many more topics when it comes to backpacking so don't forget to check those out before you go but I have no doubt that you're absolutely gonna smash it on your backpacking trip just remember you got this you do, remember that, tell yourself that, I've got this. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Bye.